If you are somebody who is looking to become an ALT, this is probably a really good video for you to learn a little bit about the process of becoming an ALT as well as the interview process and the questions they ask and that type of thing. So I've interviewed with a number of companies, over four now. I've always been offered a job. I've also did the jet interview and got waitlisted. I'm familiar with the process enough to give some good advice. You'll probably have an online interview first, maybe a demo lesson combined with that or a demo lesson on a separate day. And you'll often have a physical interview as well. The questions are centered around how fit you are to be here mentally. I think that's a main thing. They're very concerned about people who jump contract or break contract because when you break contract or you jump to a different company or go home or whatever, it usually costs them the contract that they have with the Board of Education. And these companies have to compete against each other every year to every couple of years for contracts with the boards of education to operate in certain schools. So essentially, if they have the contract, they can put ALTs in that school. And if you end up doing something that misrepresents them or puts them in a bad way, then the company could have a bad relationship then with the school, lose the contract, and it ends up costing them money as well as jobs for everybody else that are with them and employed at that school through that company. So they're really worried about if you're going to be the type of person that they can work with, or are you going to be a conflict oriented person? Or are you going to jump ship? So a lot of the questions that they ask are going to be centered around feeling you out. And also they'll ask you some teaching related questions, but honestly, they don't really put much weight on those unless you have teaching experience. What would you do in this situation? What would you do in that situation? They'll ask you, what would you do in some conflict situation with another teacher? With the students, what would you do? What is your role as an ALT? Uh, what is the disciplinary role that you have? Which is none. You know, essentially, you shouldn't be disciplining is the answer. But in reality, it does obviously fall to you sometimes to do some light discipline. What you don't want to do is be shy, introverted, or bring up, oh, I'm on this medication, I'm on that medication. Just keep all that kind of on the down low. Don't really talk about all that kind of stuff because realistically, they don't want to hear that. And for the demo lesson, they're just trying to see how outgoing you are. Do you understand the process? Google some videos of people doing demo lessons and just copy them and you'll be fine. It's really easy. They apply for something called a certificate of eligibility for you through the immigration and then mail it to you. If you have that, then you can apply for your visa. Visa allows you to come to Japan until a certain date. Once you enter the country, then you will get a residency card. That residency card gives you a status residency instructor or whatever that is and a duration. The visa is only used for entering the country. And then once you get that status residency, that will allow you to exist in Japan. And if you want to leave the country and come back, you need to get a little form that they staple into your passport. To become an ALT, all you need is a college degree, four-year degree. You need to speak English as a native. Uh, that requirement can sometimes be lax if you're already in country, but generally those being hired from abroad need to speak English natively. And you need to have your K-12 education done in English. There really isn't other requirements. The type of degree you have doesn't matter. You can get in with a gender studies degree or an engineering degree. Definitely Google all the companies and try to figure out which company you want to go with because there are better companies than others. And there is a tier list based on benefits and people who have good experiences. But one thing to keep in mind is that just because you have a good company doesn't mean that you'll have a good experience. There are people who go to good companies and have bad experiences, and there are people who go to bad companies and have good experiences. You are the biggest determiner of how good a time you're going to have here. That's what I've noticed overall. People who have a good mentality, who are outgoing, who are happy, and generally take things on the shoulder and just brush it off, those people do very well. People who take things personally, think that their job is more than it is. These type of people generally have a hard time. So just take it lightly. Just don't take things too seriously. Be outgoing and have fun with it. And that's what they're looking for. And that's about it. All right. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comment. Like and subscribe. Please. Thank you.